Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw this cypress tree picture. Now I know there's a lot more than cypress trees in here, but they're mostly cypress trees here, so that's why we called it cypresses. And there's a little bit of architecture, a little bit of landscape. So this should be really fun. We're gonna be using our oil pastels and our brown watercolor dye and I will begin by showing you how to draw it. Let's make a big plus sign on our paper and keep in mind that we'll be using oil pastels later and they stay on the surface. So if you draw really hard, you're gonna create a groove in your paper. So just gently sketch as we're learning to draw this. And once we find the middles and do the plus sign, we're gonna start with the architecture in this drawing. So the building that um, is rather famous in Tuscany and has all these cypress trees all around. Um, and we're gonna start with a square. So you're gonna find this rectangle. We're gonna use these two sides to create a square. So very gently, and you can see that I didn't use a ruler. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can use a ruler. Um, it's, it's a little bit bigger than like three centimeters, looks like to me. All right, so that's gonna be the beginning of one of our walls. And then we're gonna have the roof line that goes a little past the wall. And then it's gonna head in this direction. So see how I'm using my grid, I found a space where things are gonna be. So now that would be if my house was exactly two squares wide, but it is a little more than two squares wide. I'm gonna go about a square and a half wide on this side. And kind of looks like I'm drawing a shoebox at this point. So you've just got a rectangle with a lid on the top. All right, and you can see I have plenty of room down here and plenty of room up there because I want to look pretty interesting. Okay, next, the peak of my roof is going to happen low down and a little to the right of this line. So I'm just gonna put a dot right about there and then I'm gonna run this diagonal all the way over to here. And then I'm gonna run a diagonal to there. Now notice it's not centered. That's because we're gonna be looking sideways at a rather square shaped building. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna go from the bottom here up a bit to head this direction and then put a perfect vertical on there and connect those. Um, it shouldn't be higher than this line. If you went so far that it got higher than this line, you wanna back it up a little bit because we wanna be able to create a slope like this. Um, we wouldn't wanna roof this flat here where we would get lots of heavy snow on it, but um, evidently it works well in Tuscany. So now I can make a line coming down. All right, now you can kind of see that square shape. And I'm gonna start from this corner and I'm gonna head this way. And I might need to come a little farther down. Let's see, yep, we're gonna be okay. Get a little wider and then have a straight line that way and then create the roof on this house that sticks out here. So this is another little area and then see how that goes kind of flat behind it. All right, that is our simple structure. Uh, so it's a great introduction to architecture. And again, if you want like real architectural drawing, I am not your person, but we should be able to, to handle this. So let's get some little windows on. So we're gonna put this down here below and notice how 
I don't go around the square, but I do parallel lines at one time and then kind of come together. So next, it has a very interesting window. So I'm going to go parallel to this side and then a parallel line next to it and then create kind of this archway. This is a little bit of perspective because I'm using this edge to help me know to go in a curve in that space. So that's going to help that line up. There's another set of skinny things, windows and doors over here. So I'm going to line this up. And then there's just some little things that get kind of lined up here. And I can't put a square because I'm on the side. It has to be a parallelogram or a rhombus in order to make sense in this space. Uh, because if I put a square, then that's impossible looking at it from the side. So we've got these interesting little windows. Not what you would think of as a window normally. Kind of looks like it would be great for a puppet show. We could put lots of little critters coming in and out of all these different little windows. All right, so that's pretty well positioned for where those windows will go. And now I'm going to run some lines over here for where the windows on the front will go. Now these can be squares. Okay, so I'm just lining them up. I'm closing them off. And then the one on the bottom is a little smaller than the one on the top. So even though I ran those lines all the way down, it still helped me kind of get a good position on that. When you see me with my precision eraser, uh, don't panic. It's not going to get too tight and too detailed. I just think this will be easier for you to see these windows here. So I'm going to clean out, first of all, my helping line in all of this. Remember how that one came all the way that way? This one we get to keep. Um, and I'm going to get rid of my helping line inside of my house going this way. So that was the big plus line. Now, over here where the windows are, we had some helping lines there too. Uh, remember this one that went around that shape so we could get that nice archway? And this one that made sure that that window and doorway were in line with one another. Okay. And then we had this helping line that made sure the large square window and the small square window were in line. Now I forgot something. This archway is not, this isn't like a super tall door all by itself. There's like a window up here and then like an entryway underneath of that. So it has like that arching window. So there we have it. All the fascinating windows at this place. All right, now we get to move on to all the cypress trees. It's gonna kind of look like the cypress trees are taking over because there are so many. Uh, so first off, over here where this little part of the house is, this is where the plateau on which this house is built um, ends. And you can kind of see down and over. And so there's like that plateau. And we don't need to see over here yet because we're going to have some trees over there. Um, so at this point, we get to put our very first cypress tree. And it is going to be coming, growing up right next to this plateau. Grows right up there and we'll go... I like to call these popsicle trees because they look like a twin pop that you break in half and share. Uh, they're very tall and skinny. And so here is our first popsicle tree. All right, then there is a bit of shrubbery that kind of comes back and then kind of goes down an embankment. So that's where that goes. And then there's shrubbery kind of next to a mowed area on this yard, which is kind of fun because this will be a different color grass than this bunch of shrub stuff. And then there is a more like little hill of shrubbery going that way. So we got that. And then I'm going to erase the helping line right 
there. If this is your first time watching a video, feel free to pause and rewind. There's a lot of details in this one, um, but they're all very doable details. So I think you'll have fun with it. All right, next we have a little hill kind of back in the distance that comes up and then goes down behind the house there. So that's back in the background. And then there's another part of the hill that just kind of continues and goes off that way. And then we might as well have one folding that way. So it shows a lot of space. Now we're gonna move this way in our picture and behind the house is a nice cypress tree making the top of itself known. And then we're gonna come over here next to our windows and on this side of the house, is a cypress tree making itself known. And we'll go right to that midline, and then I'm going to erase out these parts here. No x-ray vision showing. I didn't draw the whole tree because there's going to be some shrubberies down here. So let's get our next, well, let's get our next tree and then we'll get our shrubberies. So right past this line going this way is a cypress tree that's large and in front. And it's it's mostly at the center line, but like to the right of the center. So a little off center is going to be a little bit better. Then we can put these shrubberies doing their thing over here. Okay, interesting shrubbery line. See how they kind of rolled that way. And then we're going to have a shrubbery that's kind of like going in front of this cypress tree, going up to this mode line and coming down there. All right, so. We're completely done down here. Now we'll just keep moving that way. We want to skip a little space and create another cypress tree that's about the same height as that one. You can make it a teeny bit taller or shorter, but we want them to be pretty similar. So here's my next popsicle tree. There's the base. Here's the trunk or the popsicle stick. <laughs> all right. And then before we get all the way to the end of this house, we're gonna do another one that is like a twin. And so you see how it, it's it wide off of there and it's gonna share part of this space. It's gonna stop a little higher up and its trunk is gonna be a little higher in the yard. See how that works? Okay, and then where this wall is, we have another cypress tree that is going off the page. Kind of looks like you're sitting behind Marge Simpson in a movie theater and all you can see is her hair. All right, so let's go a little bit more erasing so that this becomes the in front pieces, in front pieces, in front pieces. There we have it. And, oh, yep, in front, in front. I know there's not much of that house showing when you're done, but it still was important to draw it first before drawing all the cypress trees. The trees are easy, in other words. Okay, so this tall tree is going to be how high up this next mountain goes. So see how it goes that way, and it's going to go kind of through this one and over to that one. So there's more distant hills and mountains over there. Okay, now we're, we're really trucking along here. This is great. After this house, we need a tree that is about as high as here, but comes down and before it gets all the way to the bottom, we're gonna have it end so that we can see its tree trunk coming down this way. And then we're gonna sp skip a space and do another slightly higher one that shares this space and has a tree trunk going that way. And behind these trees, actually, let's go a little bit more that way. Behind these trees, we're gonna have one that's behind this house that's not as tall as this one and taller than that one. Okay, and then we're gonna have a hill. Mm, okay, how do we get this hill on here? Okay, well, we will have the hill only come this way. There we go. And I think I want to put a tree 
going off the page here. There. That was fun. All right, so there's a hill that way. Let's make another hill kind of going up that way. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Mm, and yeah, I think I want to see another kind of difference kind of in between. There we go. Yep. Maybe I don't want it to stop right on that line. I'm going to cross the line. I don't want too many things to stop and start at the same place because then it looks more interesting. So notice that tree did stop right there. And then see when I break free of that line, it looks cooler. I need to do something here though so that I don't have confusion about where the edge of this house is and where the edge of that tree is. So uh, that's going to just stop there. You know what? I can solve this problem easily by doing this. I'm going to make this tree go this way and this tree go that way. And then you don't have to see what's happening after that house. It can all be tree parts. Okay, so see what we did here. Tree part, tree part, tree part. And now I don't have to try to explain what's going on there. Oh, I have to make sure I go higher than this line in order for that to really work out. Okay, see why I had to go higher. Okay, so almost... Good idea, Miss Elaine, but we're not quite there yet. Got to keep going. Can't be lower than this line right here for all the blocking. It's like I have a football team of cypresses, and they're playing defense, and they're going to block the view. Okay, now we got it. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to erase all of our helping lines and get our black Sharpie marker out. All right, my helping lines are erased. I have a fine point Sharpie marker, but before I trace, I'm just gonna check out my architectural skills. If you take a perfect rectangle or a ruler and you line it up where it touches one, two points at the bottom, and if this is a straight line, then you should be able to check to see if your verticals are truly vertical. So like that one's a vertical, that one's vertical, that one's vertical, that one's pretty close. It looks like I started to veer out a little bit at that point. Vertical, vertical. Okay, that one's pretty close. Just gonna make sure. Um, something called a T-square is what architecture people, architects use. Um, and so as long as your verticals are straight up and down, it will look more realistic. So that's just a trick. And it, you have to be careful that you're not like following this line and these points aren't being met because they have to all three be met in order for it to truly be vertical. So that's how that works. It doesn't, all the other lines, there's not a neat trick like that. These guys, there's nothing to line up with. These ones, it's only the vertical lines that will fit into that category of like line it up and you can check your work that way, okay? So for the house and I'd say even for your tree trunks, yep, yep. Ooh, well, it's okay if he gets a little wider, he is a tree trunk. You know, that will be helpful for you. All right, let's start. You can start anywhere you want. I'm going to go for very good, bold lines. And I'm going to wiggle just a little bit so it looks more interesting. And I'm going to erase wherever I get out of the lines. So that's how I'll trace the land. Oh, but, but this marker is mushy, and that's architecture. Oh my, what will I do? Well, let's see. I will just go gently. There we go. Whew. And you're probably like, Miss Elaine, why are you torturing yourself with that terrible marker? Well, I know that I have to color with crepas and that they are big and thick, so... Uh, they don't like to go into tiny petite spaces either. So if I can do it with this marker, then I'm going to be fine when I get to my crepa. And close enough counts, right? Also, these little windows, we're going to color them in because it's going to be daytime. 
and there may be light reflecting off of these guys, but we're not going to try to color those in with Sharpie. So we will, I mean, in with Crepa. So we will fill them in with Sharpie instead. Okay, I am all traced and all erased, but whoops, I forgot the road. So I'm just going to add a little road in here. And so the little road is going to kind of bend in behind these trees. I'm going to draw on the trees and then erase after. So it kind of whips out. And it's the kind where... There's gravel only where the tires go, and there's like grassy goodness in between the tread because they didn't want to have to put so much gravel. That would be expensive and hard work. So they come around kind of like this. And perspective tells me that it's going to be closer together back here and get a little wider after it bends this curve. So see, I'm using sketchy motions. I'm sure it goes back there and comes this way. And I'm gonna put it behind things because I can't erase Sharpie and that's okay. Behind it is a good enough place for a road. Okay, and yeah, so now I'm gonna erase here and here and I'm gonna keep in mind one, two, three, four. There, we have our little road. Also, you notice when I traced that I didn't necessarily connect things together. So those hills are in the back, they're kind of hazy. I got to draw the whole tree, but leaving little gaps like that looks kind of interesting, right? So remember, interesting is good. So it's okay to leave little gaps, little gaps. Now I'll clean this road up and we will get started with our colors. Hip hip hooray, colors. And I know we all have our 25 color set. Mine's a little worse for rare, yours is new. Um, and so we get to use a lot of colors on this one. So in some of our projects, I've limited the palette this one, we get to kind of go at it. So it's going to be super fun with lots of delightful colors. And I'm going to use my piece of paper that I use to measure my verticals to make a mark every time I use a color. And it may be that I will go back and use a color again. A lot of times in the past, once we use a color, we're done with it. But this time, we might come back to it. So um, we, we will see, right? Okay, so first I'm going to start with like the lemony yellow. And everywhere I think I see some light shining on this little location, I'm just gonna put a little yellow. And so instead of solidly coloring things, you can see I've got a bit of dancing light here and it's not solid. So this is very different where I, instead of me like coloring whole areas, I'm gonna be like saying, oh no, let's just put some of this here and some of this here and some of this there. So we'll do a little bit of that in that location. Yeah, and then we'll do a little bit like up there. Oh, on the backyard here where it's coming around this little slope before it gets to our road. We're gonna put some yellow there. Yeah, okay. All right, that's enough regular yellow for now. And then I'm going to play with a little bit of purple. Okay. So this may feel weird. It's like, why purple? But, well, purple and yellow is good together. So I'm not coloring with all my might. You can see I'm using kind of a gentle approach to getting this purple on this, these roofs. And I'm even gonna put some there and there and even there. So all the roof and the gutters. Get some nice purple on there. 
Then we also have this side of the wall because that's the sunny side. So this is the shadow side. So I'm going to put it on the shadow side. And you can see lots of spaces. The paper is bumpy. I want to be able to see those spaces through there and not have it's solid. That way there's more room for me to put other stuff on there. And hey, our little gravel road. Gonna have a little purple on there too. because It's in the shadow zone. And see how I went on the two places where the tires would go not in the middle. Okay. All right. That seems good for purple for now. Eh, I might put a little purple here because it just looks like fun. Some haze. Maybe a little haze back in here there we go just a little bit all right <clears throat> next i'm going to find by the way it didn't matter which purple you use the light purple and the dark purple are so much alike i can't even tell them apart so as long as you use purple it's fine we're going to use oh i forgot to make my marks okay here we go lemon yellow a purple of some sort and it looks like I was using the regular purple and now yellow ochre yes not to be confused with ogres like Shrek he's green this is yellow ochre okay um, next I'm gonna put a lot of yellow ochre in some places so here on the yard I'm gonna put a little yellow ochre I'm gonna put some on this wall where this lemon is. Wall with lemon, wall with lemon. Just a little bit there. All right, now this purple wall back here, this is where I'm gonna put a lot of yellow ochre. So I'm gonna press pretty hard so that it creates that dark purple yellow shadow color because it still has the tone that the house is. And this helps it to still look like it's a shadowy side of that yellow color. And of course, if there's any white parts, then it can go there too, where the purple didn't go all the way. So there we have our yellow ochre wall. Now for the brown one, the brown one that's called brown, but looks like burnt sienna. It's kind of a reddish brown. So we're gonna put that hanging out with the purple up here on the roof. There we go. That looks mighty nice. And you can be a little firm. We might put another color, we might not. We'll see. And it'll go on both sides at this point. And it's probably not done up there, but you can see we're well on our way because it kind of looks like one of those cottages that you see in Tuscany. There's a lot of red terracotta looking roofs with that Tuscan golden walls. All right, here we have that. Okay, yay. All right, well, we should probably get into a little bit of these tall cypresses because that's what this picture is about, after all. I want there to be a strong highlight side to these cypresses because we see the, the sunlight's hitting this side pretty brightly. Same thing with the trees, but I don't want to match like my grasses and hills and stuff. So I'm going to take the plain yellow. Remember, we started with regular yellow. I'm going to take the plain yellow and I'm just going to put a nice thin yellow line right down the left side of all these cypresses. Uh, because otherwise, I'm not very happy with other my green choices. So we're just going to mix a teeny bit to get that light green choice. Now I don't have to run down there because that's overlapping. That goes to there. To there. This one is not overlapping. They just happen to be in a row. And so we've blocked them. Kind of like I blocked this, but they're not touching. See? So... And like so. All right, that seems good. And then we're gonna find our darkest green. So pretty sure the one called deep green is the darkest one we have. And so we're just gonna go ahead and color our cypress trees and it's okay to go where you put your yellow. See how it creates 
the yellow and the green together. And you can leave some spots because when brown gets there later, we don't mind that at all. So these will be our dark green trees. Okay, now you can see my colored cypresses. And when I had these two trees together, I just left a little bit of white showing right next to the line. And that way, uh, the brown watercolor will go there. It'll just look like shadows. It'll be cool and it won't just look like a blob. So they kind of retain their shape that way. Also, I didn't color perfectly everywhere. That's okay too. Uh, we'll be well with that. And I'm not going to use that color anymore. That's just going to be safe for the cypress trees. And I'm going to use a lot of the other colors in other places. So now we're going to find the regular green one. So the one just called green. And we're going to lay in some shadowy areas and some shrubbery. So this one over here, I'm going to get some green in there. I'm going to do the bottom section as it comes down and hides in this little grouping little like that uh, then I'm going to snuggle kind of close to here and get some shadowiness going this way and then just kind of create a shadow with these all as they overlay each other so you get that dark to light kind of feel like, like that also this yard over here is pretty much in shadow because of all these trees <laughs> so i'm just going to go ahead and put this color in between these trees for the darker yard over here and this is when we get to go in between the road and right up to that yellow there we probably should get those tree trunks so we don't color on those. We'll just do those right now. We will use the olive brown color for those. That way they're not too dark and they're a different tone than the other browns we have. All right, got them all? Got them all. Okay, olive brown. I'm going to put a little bit kind of on this hill too. So even though these are next to each other, I'm going to do something different, so that's why I can put them there. All right, and we're just going to put a little striations of green back on these foggy hills. Misty, misty mountains, foggy hills. I don't know what we have, but we're going to put some green back there. It's not going to look like Van Gogh forever. Just because there's stripes now doesn't mean that's how it'll end. So don't worry. Okay, the light green, it looks like it glows in the dark and it makes me very happy. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this light green on the yellow and all on this hill like this and on this yard and even on that yellow ochre. So it's kind of a little muddy mess right there. Okay, two colors next to each other that are the same again, but it's all gonna work out. I'm going to color all on those. Lots of spaces. Don't worry. All will be well. Yep. And let's put a bunch of this color on this hill right here. Okay. The sunlight, I think, is probably hitting this way. So we'll have, like, there be this imaginary line for shadows and sun. and fog and mist. Okay. There, that looks bright and nice. Okay. All right, now I'm going to move on to regular blue. It's called cobalt blue. And I'm going to play around in this green right here with the cobalt blue so it starts to get hazy back in there. And I'm going to put a little blue here in the shadow areas. And I'm going to have this part of this hill be kind of cobalt disc. And here hanging out with the purple little cobalt there. All right, and that looks pretty bright, so I'm going to make it go next to these lines. 
I'm trying not to go on the lines, but if I do, it's not the end of the world. Things will still be fine. Okay, and light blue. Oh, light blue is going to be so fun. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use some light blue, quite a lot of light blue back in here to kind of create this hazy look. I didn't mean to get on the house. I'm going to kind of scratch it off a little bit. There we go. Good enough. Put some light blue on this green, and when it mixes up, it'll make a new green. And I'm going to put light blue on this side of the roof so that this is the shadow side, right? Because that's the brighter side. This is the shadow side. I know that doesn't look too bright yet, but it will because I'm not done with it. Shadow side shadow up this to mix it with this like we make blue makes that lovely and even light blue coming down in between here going back behind here get that feeling of like a valley now i'm gonna stripe it up a little bit Okay, got that yellow part with light blue. Um, let's do a little light blue here too. All right, oh, and maybe just a touch in my concrete my gravel. All right, um, yeah, you know what? I'm even gonna put a little light blue on this because we already had two colors, it's nice and bold so it just has that kind of misty look all right that was light blue and next we need peach or pale orange it just looks like peach but it's called pale orange and that's what i'm going to smear around this yellow and ochre color on the side of this wall with i think it's it that nice warmth to it Warm Tuscan Sun, is that where that comes from? Okay, so we got that. And then I'm gonna use it to trace the edge of the house where the gutter would be. And I'm going to trace this line coming up here with that. And I'm gonna do a little peach up in this part too, because this hill just needs a little more warmth. Maybe a little bit there too. Okay. All right. Let's do regular pink. So it's just called pink uh, because I need this to be a bit brighter on this side of the roof, but I didn't want it to get so pale with that orange. So I'm, I'm brightening that up a bit and a little bit there. All right. Cool. All right, regular pink. Now my favorite color, Prussian blue. Prussian blue, <laughs> I use this all the time. Okay, so Prussian blue is gonna go getting into everything. So we're gonna put it on the right side of these trees to create their shadow sides. Okay, and then we're going to use it in certain shadowy places here in the picture too. So that shrubbery is pretty far back there and dark. We'll put some on the top of this little hill. Uh, we will darken this lower level of this one. We're going to go in these little nooks and crannies to create depth in those shrubberies. And a little bit along the edge of the yard for to kind of like create that. And I might be put, oh, this line for this gutter. This gutter gets to be dark on this side. I know we have lots of colors on it, and you're like, I can only see the blue. It's worth it to put all the colors on there. It really is. You can put a little striations in this little world back in there. Okay, 
All right, this is looking mighty nice. Okay, gray. Gray is gonna be our final rock layer on our road. So we just go right on our little road there. And I just happened to notice that I missed a green spot right here. There we go. Yep, okay. All right. Um, colorless blender. Do you still have your colorless blender? We had a bunch of those and uh, for a past lesson, and I'm pretty sure we have enough individuals that people got those. And that's because we want to smooth out our yard now. So we're just gonna smooth out this yard right here with that and it blends that together so that the yard has a little bit different look than the rest of the, like the, the wild, you know, here is well-groomed. Then maybe they have a little golf hole over here somewhere, okay? Um, and then we're just gonna well-groom the top of the yard right there so it's nice and smooth. Yep, okay. And so that was the colorless blender. I don't think I need it any place else, do I? Well, I might use it again, but I'm gonna get my white next. So the difference between a white and a colorless blender is the colorless blender is actually has no color at all and the white will show up white. So we're gonna use the white one to make it nice and foggy down here on these mountain valley areas, okay? So kind of blend down in here. It lightens those blues and greens and has that, it feels like it's going, the fog is going down and hasn't come rising up from there yet. It's a, probably a different temperature down there. And so we have the fog from the temperature change. And then we're gonna have it continue past these trees and past this little mountain a little bit this way. Yep, so that's foggy, 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 foggy foggy and not froggy foggy um and we can do a little fog coming through this valley too right here there we go okay i like that yep and i will do a little fog on this top hill that's blue too all right that looks great i am going to use my colorless blender because i want this stuff to pretty much stay these bright colors that we have but I want them to mush together. So the colorless blender will mush them together without making them a different color. So they won't get white and lighter. So I'm gonna do that part there, a little bit up there, and the place on the sides. All right, so all of that's been mushed. All right, now I'm gonna do a little mushing into this yellow and dark green here. Mush, 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 mush. I'm not going on the lines again because I want the I want the brown to go near those lines. So mushing without mushing next to the lines. Okay, and you know what? I need some of that Prussian blue right down here because this you want to be more of a darker color. There we go. It's in a shadow. Yep. All right, I think I'm ready for our great watercolor adventure when we stick that watercolor dye right on top. Hooray, it looks bright and wonderful. Um, I did maybe leave a little bit more white right there than I would hope for, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of light blue right there for some haze, just to break that up to separate that house from that hill there. So I just added that in. This doesn't bother me, all those are good. Okay. So now I put on a glove because I don't want my fingers to be brown the rest of the evening. And I should have put a glove on this hand too, but we'll see. Hopefully this works out. And put some brown on there. I've got a sponge that is not dry and scratchy, but I have wrung it out and then I have dried it with a paper towel so no liquid could come out no matter how hard I squeezed it. And I'm gonna go in a big circle. And I chose brown this time to warm this up, it'll give it a nice warmth. We'll go with the Tuscan sun. Um, and I should be careful saying that because I'm not sure I'm saying it right. I'm using it right, so we'll find out. I'll look at, I'll Google it after and then we can discuss it at meetups. Okay, so you can see staying off of those Sharpie lines really worked nicely because it made a nice darkness when I put the brown paint on. Here's some places where I went on the line 
not quite as bold. That's okay though, but I think I'm happy that these lines up close are bolder anyway. And just going in lots of different directions. And if it doesn't look dark enough, you can always add a little more. So repetition can help. Uh, so feel free to repeat. I'm going in circles to coax it in there into the paper. And uh, I kind of wish I could just leave it like that with that, but I do know that that never fully dries and is smeary because the oil and water doesn't mix. Uh, I tried it once, so unless you can like put it behind a shadow box and never touch it, I don't recommend it because it doesn't go well. Um, and now I'm going to just wipe it off using a Kleenex today. Oh, that looks so good. All right. Hooray. And I'm not scrubbing with all my might again because, you know, that would move the oil pastel. I'm using a gentle touch. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. So we've, did the, we've done the whole thing. We've put the brown ink on it. We've dried it off with a paper towel and we're ready to take the tape off. But let's say that you look at this and you're like, I got too much peach on my windows. I am not pleased about that. Well, do not put black on it before you rub stuff around. You have to be like satisfied that you got your brown on and you like where it went. And then at the end, so like see that was a big clunk and I should put a little brown right there. So I'm not quite ready. At the end when you're sure that you've got the amount of brown that you want on here, then you can doctor it up slightly and you can use a black crepa. For some reason, if you put a black crepa on before you rub it around, black crepa bits get all over your picture and kind of not where you want it. But now I can use my black crepa to get those little windows and doors back a little bit. And, and you don't have to do this, but if you're feeling particularly fastidious today, uh, then that's one of the things you can do. Do not trace the whole thing, though. Just like if you need to get a little dose in there. Uh, you could also use a little of the light purple as a reflection. So, like, oh, the light is shining upon those places. There's what it looks like with light purple, or you could use light blue. Like, oh, reflected light, reflected light. There we go. All right, so, and if you're like, oh, that was a mistake, then you can cover it back up with black again. Do -do -do. All right, all finished. And there we have it, our finished picture. So you can see how all those colors play together. Did a lot of color mixing. We added it gradually and built it up. And then we put the brown on top of it. So that was very fun to do with you. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you at one of our meetups.